Hello, Royalty. Good morning and welcome to our touch point today. My name is God Gift Austin, a regular host and anchor to this channel. Like we used to do it, we pick our topics, deliberate on them scripturally to ascertain the mind of God in those areas of concern raised and how we should uh, respond to them. And in so doing, our questions are tackled. Praise the Lord. We'll be talking about admiration, a new series we took up on Saturday. So today we continue from that series, Admiration. In our last lesson, we're dealing with the question, who should we admire? And in our conclusion, we concluded that we should admire God for his unfailing love. We admire God for his unfailing love. This morning, we continue from there the question, who should we admire? As we read some other passages to discover who we need to really admire and why we admire who we choose to admire. Praise the Lord. Praise God. So in Psalm 77 verse 13, the Bible says, O God, your ways are holy. Is there any God as mighty as you? In Exodus chapter 15 verse 11, the Bible said, Who is like you among the gods, O Lord, glorious in holiness, awesome in splendor, performing great wonders? In other words, we should admire God's holy and awesome ways. Admire God for his unfailing love. Admire his holy and awesome ways. The next passage in Psalm 99 verse 3, the Bible said, Let them praise your great and awesome name. Your name is holy. In Psalm 111 verse 9, he has paid a full ransom for his people. He has guaranteed his covenant with them forever. What a holy, awe inspiring name he has. In Philippians chapter 2, verse 9 to 11, therefore God elevated him to the place of highest honor and gave him the name above all other names, that at the name of Jesus every knee should bow in heaven and on earth and under the earth, and every tongue declare that Jesus Christ is Lord, to the glory of God the Father. What does it mean here? We should admire and revere the name of God the Father and God the Son. Admire these names. Admire God for his unfailing love. Admire his holy names. Why should we admire him? For the price that he had paid on our behalf. In Revelation chapter 4 verse 11, we are, You are worthy, O Lord our God, to receive glory and honor and power. For you created all things, and they exist because you created what you please. Praise God. You and I were created by him. He was pleased to create you and I, so why shouldn't you admire somebody who had made you? Why should you admire some other things? For no just reason, but you have a reason to admire the God of all ages. In Psalm 19 verse 1, the Bible says, The heavens proclaim the glory of God. The skies display His craftsmanship. In Psalm 139 verse 14, the Bible says, Thank you for making me so wonderfully complex. Your workmanship is marvelous. How well I, I know it. What does it tell us here? We should admire God as the creator. Admire God as a creator. So once again, who should we admire? We should learn to do what? Admire God for who he is and what he has done. In 1 Corinthians 16, 15 to 16, the Bible says, you know that uh, Shephaniah and his household were the first of the harvest of believers in Greece, and they are spending 
their lives in the service of God's people. I urge you, dear brothers and sisters, to submit to them and others, like them who serve with such devotion. In 1 Thessalonians 5, 12 to 13, the Bible says, Dear brothers and sisters, honor those who are your elders, who are, who are your leaders in the Lord's work. They work hard among you and give you spiritual guidance. Show them great respect and wholehearted love because of their work and live peacefully with each other. Who do I say we should honor again? Aside God, we should do what? Admire faithful Christian workers. Aside God, admire faithful Christian workers, people who have done service to you. I said it when we started this teaching in this series about the people we should what admire. Admire God. We must have a reason to admire people. Don't just admire people because you just saw them, you like their appearance, you just saw them. They, if they have done nothing for you and you admire them, you're only throwing your 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 your, your gift away because it means you are actually kinda you are lost in as such a person. I want to get at the person. And the moment you do that, you zoom off. This morning, I want to give us once again opportunity to acknowledge Christ as your Lord and Savior if you have not done that. Can you quickly pray this prayer with me and say, Lord Jesus, thank you for this golden opportunity. Thank you for a day like this. Please have mercy upon my soul. Save me from eternal hell. I don't want to die and go to hell. Lord, save my soul. Wash me by your blood. Write my name in the book of life. Delete it from the book of death. Give me your fresh breath and uh, give me a new beginning. Father, I want to live and reign with you in eternity. Satan, you did not make me. You cannot keep me. I command you, take your filthy hands out of my life from this moment. Jesus Christ has paid the price for me and to him I have returned wholeheartedly today in the name of Jesus. If you have prayed this prayer with me, I want to congratulate you and continue and encourage you to continue to abide by the things you hear in this place as you pay attention and follow us continuously. The Lord will bless you in the name of Jesus. Invite your friends and to my view, viewers all over the world, I want to thank you so much for being part of this journey. The Lord will continue to bless you too and beautify your feet. Please continue to abide here. Continue to learn from here and continue to invite your friends to be part of what God is doing in this place. And as you continue to do it, you will never miss your miracle. It awaits you and it will surely get to you. God bless you, brothers and sisters, and have a fruitful week ahead of you. Let the Lord make way for you where there is no way. In Jesus' mighty name we have prayed. Amen.